So you need approval and validation from people almost as much as I need a fucking haircut. So in this video, we're gonna fix that problem, aren't we? In the form of five or six, can't quite remember right now, different affirmations that you can repeat to yourself in a social situation so you can stop craving validation so much. Let's get cracking, shall we? So why do you crave validation so much? You do it because you have a core belief about yourself that's negative and you want to disprove it through the approval of other people. Approval, attachment to approval from other people is actually a sign of disapproval of yourself. And the anxiety sets in because this is really important to you. Getting approval from people is really, really fucking important to you, isn't it? And if you don't get that validation, that might say what about you? It might say that you are unworthy of love, you are different to other people, and there is some, something fundamentally wrong with you. Toxic shame lies at the root of a desire for approval. So let's deal with it now, shall we? First of all, I want you to say to yourself this, repeat to yourself in a social situation, I do not need anyone else's approval. Approval is a preferred thing, right? It's like chocolate cake, you eat it, you get a nice feeling and then it leaves again. But approval does not give you the permanent fulfillment that people think it does. It's just a temporary sensation that comes and goes. But what stays? You. No matter what comes and goes in your sensory experience, you are the thing that remains. Therefore, you don't need approval. You want it, but let's be honest, you don't really need it now, do you? The next thing I want you to remind yourself of, I am perfectly okay as I am. Do you disagree with me? Well, don't. <laughs> Have you ever met a perfect person? No, me neither. And I guarantee you, if you met a perfect person, whatever that would look like, you wouldn't trust them because it'd be a bit creepy, it'd be a bit weird, and it'd be a bit too uncanny valley, a bit too good to be true. So you wouldn't trust yourself, you wouldn't trust that person. So then that's also an imperfection, isn't it? So it couldn't even happen, even if we wanted it to. The next thing is to remind yourself that you are not responsible for other people's feelings. Say it to yourself, I'm not responsible for other people's feelings. One of the mistakes you might be making is in a social situation, you're trying to say the perfect thing. You're trying to come across in a certain way or trying to edit yourself to such a degree that you're trying to manipulate people's responses to you. But remember this, you can't control people's perceptions of you. You can't control how people receive you and you certainly can't control people's emotions. We learned to do this from childhood. We kind of learned that if we do certain things, we get certain responses and stuff like that. Now we've carried this through into adulthood to the point where now it's like we use, we're use using this sort of childlike manipulation to, to change people's responses to us. Now the problem with that is we are not being true to ourselves. We're just putting on this front, putting on this mask all the time that changes depending on who we're around which keeps you alienated from yourself and keeps other people alienated from who you truly are. So even if you get the approval that you seek, you will lack that deep, fulfilling connection because you're not making direct contact with the other person. You're putting on a front and they're, they, they're responding to the front that you're putting on and most of the time, they're also putting on a front. So it's not two people interacting, it's two fronts talking and, and reaffirming each other's bullshit. So. Yeah, so cut that out. Stop trying to control the perceptions and emotions of other people and instead focus on the things that you can control, which is how authentically you show up to the world and express yourself. Remember this, you are not for everybody. That's another one you can repeat to yourself. I am not for everybody. Even if you showed up as this perfect person, charming, witty, funny, all the rest of it, charismatic, likable, even if you showed up as this person in a cocktail party full of 100 different people, you would have 100 different responses. At most, you could get, I'd say about 60% of the room to, to genuinely like you, and the rest of them would kind of dislike you or be a bit meh about you, and that's if you're absolutely perfect in that situation, which you're not likely to be. When you try and please everybody and try and be liked by everybody and get approval from everybody, you are loved by nobody. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather be loved by a few people in my life and probably hated by a few than just go through my entire life with everyone ends up being sort of meh. Oh, Ollie is kind of loop, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure, he's a nice guy, but I don't know. No, let's walk because I'm getting some funny looks from people. <laughs> Another thing I like, to, I like to sort of repeat to myself is, if I've expressed myself and someone dislikes me, that is a sign that I have kind of been true to myself. So repeat to yourself, if someone dislikes me, this is a sign that I'm being authentic and true to myself. And over time, you can start to value that more than the approval of other people. So that was me coming to you from the noisy 
busiest city in the world, Lisbon, Portugal. <laughs> Take care guys, see you next time.